say what I've got to say for, before I even go down this road. Because I really don't want to go down this road. It seems like I always end up going down the road of homosexuality and lesbianism. I don't want to go there. But if I didn't care about their people, I wouldn't preach about it. If I didn't care about their souls, I, homosexuals, if I didn't care about your soul, I wouldn't be warning you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't care if you went to hell. But I do care. And so I'm going to continually warn you. And lesbians, I'm going to warn you. Prostitutes, I'm going to warn you that you need to repent. Come out from that lifestyle. You wasn't in that lifestyle. Somebody talked you into it. A spirit came from someone. Someone led you into lesbianism. Someone led you into homosexuality. You or you led someone else. And that's even worse. But it's a spirit come upon you. You didn't have that when you were born. You didn't have that when you were young. Somebody took you into that sin. And his name is Satan. He might have used your friend. He might have used another person. But you don't have to live that lifestyle. And you know that it's wrong. You know that it's not natural for two men to sleep together and make love. You know that. Animals don't do it. And, and you know it's wrong for two women to do that. Your mom and dad didn't do it. If they did, you wouldn't be here. And so I'm just telling you right now that it's not natural, and so I'm going to warn you. But Sodom and Gomorrah, if you study the Word of God, you find out that God sent two angels into Sodom. He told Abraham, he said, I'm going down to Sodom and, and Gomorrah, and I'm going to see if what I'm hearing is actually going on. But he sent two angels. These are holy angels, walked into town. And all the men started lusting after him, and they went to see Lot, and they went into Lot's house. Lot said, come on in here, because if you hang around out there, you're going, they're going to do some messy stuff. Anyway, so he told them to come on in the house, and, and the, the mob of men lusting with the satanic lust came and said, send those men out here that we can make love with them. And that's, the, that's what he meant. He said, we want, to, we want to be with them. We want to have a good time with them. And Lot... Fearing God. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say that what he told them was absolutely 100% right, but he feared God more than he feared his own losing his own children. He said, listen, y'all. He said, I've got two daughters in here that have never known man. They're virgins. Now, I'm going to send them out. I'll send them out to you, and you can have your way with them. But don't mess with these men of God. That's when you put God before everything. He cared more about the men of God being obedient to God than he did his own children. And church, God says, except we love him more than we do our wives, our husbands, our children, or anyone else, we shall never inherit. We're not worthy to be called his disciples. And so this is, I want to just get that out. Now I got that out, now I'll go ahead and start what I was going to say. Because it's a warning. If we didn't care, if I didn't care for you, I wouldn't be preaching to you. I wouldn't continually hound you with repent and come out from it. Because you're going to hell, and I'm not the judge or the jury, but I've read the Bible, and the Bible tells me that you've got a front seat in hell, except you repent and come out from it. I don't care what the preachers say. They can say that it's all right. The preachers and pastors can stand in the pulpit and say it's a different way of life. The government can say, we're going to give you extra money if y'all want to commit sin. We're going to spend more money so that you can commit these sins. The president and all the people in Congress in Washington are standing behind the homosexuals and promoting it and promoting it and promoting it and saying it's okay it's another way of lifestyle it's all right it's all right but they're sending you to hell is what they're doing they don't care about your soul but the preachers that are called of god are standing up and saying jesus loves you he died for you he loves you he doesn't love the sin you're committing he doesn't love the liars he doesn't love the thieves the sin of lying and thievery but he loves the sinner he loves the sinner and he will save your soul if you'll just come out from the sin and, 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 and call upon the name of the Lord. Get in church. Get into the gospel of Jesus Christ. Read the Bible and pray to God. And one day, if you keep messing around in church, and if you keep reading the Bible and asking God for help, guess what's going to happen? The Holy Ghost is going to come down and pay you a visit. And a lot of you pastors and preachers don't even have the slightest idea what I'm talking about because he's never visited you because you've never saw it. And, and, I, and I'm not talking about the men of God. I'm not talking about the ones that are preaching the truth. I'm talking about the false prophets. The Bible says they're everywhere, and I see them. But I'm talking, I'm talking about the ones that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, homosexual, lesbian, if you'll come out of the sin, 
liar, thief, murderer, I don't care who you are, if you'll come out of the sin and get in church that preaches the truth and you just hang around with Christians, one day the Holy Ghost is going to come by. He's going to walk by and he's just going to touch your heart. And when he sticks out that Holy Ghost finger and touches your heart, it's going to place you under conviction, not condemnation. You're already condemned, but he'll place you under conviction. And you'll go to realizing, you know, hell is real. Hell is real. See, right now you're blinded. You don't care about heaven or hell. If you did, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. But one day you're going to realize hell is real. And my soul is going to spend eternity in pain in the lake of fire. You're going to realize that the word of God is truth. No matter what the government says, no matter what people say, the word of God is truth. I'm telling you, it's, it's absolute truth because I know what he did for this sinner. I know the life I was living and I know what happened when he came into my life. We've got people in this congregation that knows what God has done in their life. And he'll do the same. But he'll come and touch your heart and you'll realize that hell is real and you don't want to go to hell. And you'll say, Lord, I need help. And that Holy Spirit will start drawing you. John six forty four will become rea a reality in your life. And as you call upon the name of the Lord, he'll come in and he'll take that burden off of you. He'll take that sin and place it under the blood of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will come into your heart and you'll become a new creature in Christ. You'll no longer want to sin. You'll no longer want that lifestyle. You'll no longer want anything except a witness for Jesus Christ. And you'll get out and tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, John the Baptist came into town. He didn't come in and go down to the, the house of ill repute or the prostitute's house. He didn't come in and go to the bars. He didn't come into town and, and go to the honky-tonks. He didn't come into the town. He went straight to the king. He said, I got a message. And he went straight to Herod. And he told Herod, Herod, you're living in adultery. He said, Herod, you can't live the life that you're living. You're living in sin because Peter... You, you're will, you married Peter's, your brother's wife, and Peter's still alive. He said, you're living in sin. He went straight to the king. And church, that takes the Holy Ghost boldness to do that. But he went straight to the king, just as we need to go straight to the president and tell our president of the United States, he's taking this country down the, the roughest dirt road we've ever been in in our lives. He's taking this country to hell. And I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, black, white, green, yellow. I don't care. Our government is leading us to hell. He's going to destroy this country. His whole heart is destroy this country. He's a Muslim, and I'm telling each and every one of you, he's not a born-again Christian. Because if he's a born-again Christian, he would not be promoting abortion. He would not be promoting homosexuality. He would not be taking a stand for the lesbians and our sinners of the world. He would take a stand on the rock of Jesus Christ uh, and say, no, 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 I'm president now, and this stuff has got to quit. I don't care about the ACLU or whatever it is, the, this, uh, you know, the libertarians and all, well, I don't know what they are, but he, the, the, the ones that stand, if you say, if you sneeze, they take you out in a lawsuit. That, that what is it, ACLU? Ace, huh? ACLU. Every one of them, are, they're hypocrites, they're sinners, there's not a child of God in the whole organization. And I'm telling you, you say you're judging. No, I'm going by the Word of God. And I'm telling you right now, you cannot stand on the Word of God and serve the devil. You cannot stand on the Word of God. And then you can't, you can't be wavering. The Bible says not to waver because you're not going to get anything from heaven. And hell is full of people today that did good. Hell is full of people today that said, I'm going to go do good things in this community. But they didn't do it by the Word of God. They did it by the flesh and the lust of the flesh. And it's time to tell the world, I don't care if you like me. I don't care if you judge me. It doesn't make any difference to me what you do to me. I'm here to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you pastors, it's time that you pull up your pants and you stand on the solid rock and say, Lord God, they can keep me out of the church. They can take my paycheck, but I'm going to stand and teach them the truth. I'm going to preach the Holy Ghost and I'm going to preach the baptism. I'm going to preach what the Word of God says. And church, each and every one of us, if you're sitting in a dry, dead church, praise God, you need to get out of it 
because you're going to be held accountable. You know better, and if you don't know better, then you're breaking God's commandment because He commands every one of us to study the Word, rightly divide the Word, He says, and make yourselves approved. We need to know, make ourselves sure. Hey, we need to know what the Word of God says. And if we're not doing that, we're sinning too because we're violating the commandment. We've got to, He commands us to rightly divide it. He commands us to study it. And if we don't know the Word, and we're sitting under preachers that don't know the Word, then we're just as guilty as they are. Because you should know the Word of God so that when the man of God gets up there and tells you it's not for the church today, you'll stand up and hold the Bible and say, let me tell you something, preacher. Let me tell you something, pastor. This is the Word of God. And in the Word of God, it says it's for me. It's for my children. And as many as are far off that are called. So don't tell me the gifts of the Spirit are not for today. Don't tell me the gifts of the Spirit is for yesterday. Don't tell me the Word.